Shalom dear friends, Shalom from Jerusalem. Sorry we had some delay, technical problems, we are in a new place. Uh, we tried to go out with the professional cameras, but we didn't succeed, so uh, we get back to old technology uh, by phone. Uh, so we lost some time, sorry, but uh, uh, we're glad to see you, glad to see you guys. Can you open please search, help me to find. Uh, so I'm here on the roof, on the rooftop, on Jerusalem with my friend uh, Serge Sergei. He's a pastor uh, from Tel Aviv. It's a wonderful life-giving church, uh, full of young people, not only young people, but full of young people, and they are preparing Tel Aviv for revival. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise God, we are blessed with good leaders in the land of Israel, good pastors, uh, the older and younger. So it's beautiful to see body of Messiah uh, growing up. So uh, I will start to update you with uh, some changes we have in Israel and we will speak word of God and we will pray and I'm really full of expectation what God is going to do uh, today. So I see we are live, uh, wonderful. So I will take time just to tell the stories until uh, our, our friends uh, logging in and joining. Uh, I know we lose, lost some guys, some friends uh, who've been waiting for us exactly at seven. Uh, but you know technology sometimes it happens yeah. but I know I will send this link and message to every friend who missed it and uh, later many friends could join us and and see it anyway so uh, before we start to speak about our uh, coming events about day of Jerusalem about uh, feast of Shavuot that actually happens going to be, going to happen next week in Israel and uh, later on by international calendar, Gregorian calendar, but uh, really by the end of uh, next week here in Israel. I would love to ask you, uh, Sergey Serge, how shall I call you for our friends? Sergey, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so uh, Sergey, you are pastor uh, of church in Tel Aviv, uh, ICF, uh, Congregation or Church. Uh, so please, please, please tell us a little bit, how was those days, the coronavirus days, the, all the changes for you in Tel Aviv? Yep. So, uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, Pastor Israel. It's a great honor to share some thoughts, some ideas. And uh, for us, it has been a challenging time, I would say, as for all church. We, I, I, for, you know, I, I believe in Jesus. I, I'm part of the church since I'm eight years old and never missed a church, maybe for one week or two weeks, but for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. We couldn't uh, come together and worship together. Of course, as a, as a ICF as a church, we have been ready. We, we were ready to do online, so we brought all the equipment to our apartments and we turned our our uh, living room into the studio. Most likely, all churches in uh, such a cases uh, have done. And we, uh, me personally, I enjoyed this time because when you can share using Facebook Live or other social media, when you can uh, impact on so many people's life and think outside uh, of your box of the, you know, traditional life in a point of view on the church, I think it's a blessing because I'm innovative person. I like to in, uh, experiment. I like to, uh, you know, check new ideas. And this, this thing is, 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 is blessed our church. And, since two years, like in 2018, with my team, we were dreaming about church online, and I uh, and I remember even uh, in some pastor gathering here in Israel, I asked to pray for this idea. And uh, I know pastor, many pastors were. Uh, what are you talking about, yeah, right? Some pastors, <laughs> they said, "Yeah, it's great thing, church online. It's uh, let's pray for this." And some other pastors, uh, they said. What is that concept? How it can be? And find why we need we need a relationship. Yeah, we yeah, need to we see need, each other. We, 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 we need this fellowship and and so on. And I, I really really appreciate what God has done with the church. And I think it will it will affect church global. It will open mm -hmm. a lot more doors. As I said, and now in nowadays right now church is without borders. Church is without mm -hmm. walls. As we as we can see through this uh, old technology we can use. So me, uh, you know, it was exciting time, but in, in, in another hand now, it's challenging time, because in Israel, uh, since this Friday, in, in t after tomorrow, we can have, um, you know, gathering of people in the, in the location, 
and I'm yeah. thinking about what we can do better, how we can change our, you know, um, how it can be online and offline at the same time. So that's that would be a challenge mm -hmm. we we go in now. Well, uh, Sergey, we always pray for people when I go live. Mm -hmm. I always uh, pray for people and ask people to send their request. Uh, and uh, many people send them right now as we speak, send their prayer request and we're praying from Jerusalem, from Israel, from Jerusalem. Uh, we're sitting on the rooftop behind us, as you can see, uh, beautiful walls of ancient Jerusalem. That's the beautiful place and tourists cannot visit us. We used to be together and normally uh, at May, Jerusalem would be full of people, full of visitors, millions of people coming from all over the world, especially Christians, uh, Jews and Christians coming to pray, coming to be here. And now because of that situation, uh, my friends cannot visit me. My friends cannot travel, but praise the Lord. We are here in Israel. We are here to share our life, uh, but also to serve you, to update you. I know Israel is uh, uh, go going behind uh, many other countries uh, you know we were first hit heavily by coronavirus I mean uh, not like like Italy or other countries but for our little country uh, it was a serious threat and Israel responded but also Israel going out of uh, that situation out of quarantine out of restrictions uh, one of the as one of the first countries so we're going to update you and share with you what's going on what's happening but most important together we're going to see miracles of God together we're going to see power of God and God is moving and touching lives and I'm excited to see how uh, God is using our prayers even though we are in distance we are distant we cannot be together we cannot pray together but God using the social media God using our prayers to touch lives to change lives to answer prayers to heal people to bring healings and you know uh, I can tell you my friends before we go into uh, pray for all the friends I want to tell you send your prayer requests send us your prayer request and we will be praying for you you know, uh, Sergey, Pastor Sergey, even at the last meeting uh, I get in our congregation in Ashdod, uh, we had, uh, uh, I heard right after meeting, two testimonies. Now, last week we could gather only in open place for prayer uh, and only up to 50 people. So we were 45, just to be sure, be secure, because, you know, we are being watched and checked and, and such. Uh, so we had, uh, uh, we, by the end we prayed. So I prayed for people. And you know, to my amazement, uh, two people were healed and testified right away. One sister, who, uh, she was right there in the meeting. Uh, I didn't lay hands, I was praying uh, uh, just there for everyone and she get healing. Uh, she has a growth on her arm and her growth disappeared right there as we spoke. And another lady she, from my congregation, our sister, she was home. She couldn't join us, she couldn't register on time, you know. We have way more people who would love to come, so first 45 people who had the opportunity to come. Uh, so she was watching us and she also was healed, praise the Lord, from allergies, severe, serious allergy. And she sent me a message just saying, Pastor Israel, I was healed, hallelujah, praise God. So I see God is healing people in person when they are in our meeting and people who are even from the same church, you know, from the same spiritual family, uh, a sister who's sitting home and she was watching us and she was healed. Hallelujah. So that's why I love our live broadcast because we can receive prayers and we can pray for you as we speak. And, uh, but also, you know, I have a number of testimonies and that was amazing to me when people saw our program and, you know, for some uh, areas of, his, of, of, of the world, it was too late. For some areas of the world, it was too early. People work and they couldn't watch. So when I spoke about prayer and about healing and I pray for people, uh, many people repost their video, uh, our video. They repost uh, uh, live program and people saw it later, mm -hmm. later. And when they watched it, they were healed. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing to me. You see, Holy Spirit is moving and is touching lives of people uh, beyond our abilities beyond even our presence so uh, praise God these programs from Jerusalem behind me you see wall of Jerusalem Jaffa gate 
ancient historical Jaffa Gate and this area full of biblical history. But what's a very important Jerusalem, it's not only city of past. It's not only city of history. It's all also city when God is moving today and city of future. Yeah. There is so many biblical promises about future of Jerusalem. And uh, now we're preparing for next uh, two major events for our country. It's a time of uh, God to move, time of miracles, because we're going to have two feasts. First of all, coming Friday, we're going to have Feast of, uh, or, or Day of Jerusalem, Day of Jerusalem. It's a prophetic date, a prophetic day, because on that day, uh, 50 some years ago, Jerusalem was reunited again and uh, taken by Israelis. After 2000 years of exile, after 2000 years of being casted out, people of Israel came to Jerusalem again to live here, to settle here, but also to run Jerusalem. And if, when you read the Bible, you see there is many biblical prophecies exactly about that, about both, about the restoration of Israel, exile, destruction, but then by the end days, restoration of Israel and restoration of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you, I believe today, through our prayer, and we're going to pray with Pastor, Pastor Sergei also pray for, for people, pray for sick, and they see uh, different testimonies to how God is using his prayers. So we're going to pray from Jerusalem, pray for you, for your loved ones, for your relatives, for your needs. So send us your prayer requests, we're going, we, we're going to pray, and uh, we're going to pray for miracles of God, hallelujah. And I can tell you, when biblical feasts taking place, when biblical events taking place, it's a season for miracles. It's a season for God to move. It's a season when God do different miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I'm waiting for, to share with you in, in, in a little bit, in a few minutes, I will share with you fresh testimony what God did just yesterday. I heard it this morning. It happened just yesterday. Amazing healing that God by, done by God. Hallelujah. Before, before we're going to pray, I would like to read from Isaiah 46. Mm -hmm. And for this uh, verse in Isaiah, just hit me this week. And I was thinking about how God cares about us. Because all what Pastor Israel said about mm -hmm. restoration of Israel, restoration of Jerusalem, we see that God's you know hand is never tired to bless it's never tired to carry us so uh, I, I will read Isaiah 46 just a second Sergey before you read uh, let me greet our friends I see friends join us I see Tete uh, watching us Eugene uh, Artyom is from Ashdod hi Artyom Evgi Shalom brother uh, Irwin uh, Grace is watching us Dennis Olson Shalom Dennis Shalom dear friends Andre uh, Shalom from Uganda Mukasa is watching us Mukasa David Shalom brother uh, Elijah Hallelujah I Eli Elijah uh, Rita Antonio Mariette Andy, shalom, dear brothers and sisters, shalom from Jerusalem. And I see the Facebook picture. It looks like we are in the studio and behind us is a picture, right? Mm. Look at this, look at the, the lights, but actually not. We are on the rooftop. Yep. We are in actually TBN studio on the rooftop and we got behind us real walls of Jerusalem. We are in fresh air. It's a hot day. Uh, today it was almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit or how much, uh, oh, you, do you have temperature here? Now it's 33 Celsius, so it's about... 33 Celsius? 70 something. Yeah, about, about 80, I guess, about 80 or uh, upper 70s. So it's hot, but very nice. Sun is down. So we are in Jerusalem going live, live from the rooftop. And the rooftop has a significance. You know, Jesus mentioned rooftops a number of times. Prophets uh, mentioned rooftops. Jesus said to proclaim what's been said in quiet, what's been said in quiet rooms, what's been said in Bible studies in the rooms. We're going to proclaim from the rooftops, hallelujah. So me and my, my friend Sergei, pastor from Tel Aviv, uh, we are on the rooftop to pray for you, to proclaim true of God, hallelujah. There is life around us, we see, we hear lots of noises, but let's read Isaiah 40, what is it, 40? It's uh, 46 uh, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Listen what God says, I will be your God throughout your lifetime. 
Hallelujah. So God will be with us mm -hmm. through all our life. Yes. Until your hair is white with age. Mm -hmm. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along I and save you. you. Isn't it amazing that God, our God we worship, He carries us. There is Hallelujah. a different type of religion, you mm -hmm. know, when people carry their God, doing some traditions, religious duties. There is uh, plenty of religious, uh, like Hinduism and so on, where people are physically carrying their you know they're gods but we worshiping God who is carrying us mm -hmm. and our part of a deal it's to let him carry us it's to yeah. trust in him and let go some stuff and I believe especially in this time uh, after coronavirus or if you still under lockdown it's still you there that we need just to trust our Lord with mm -hmm. all we have sometimes or most of the time we worry we freaking out about finances, whatever situations we have. But I believe this is a secret of intimate relationship with God when we trust Him, when we allow Him to carry us. So when we will yes. be praying today, let's imagine that we like a little kids, even though we grown up. And as I, I believe, especially for men, it's a little harder. For women, kind mm -hmm. of when you carry women, you know, it's it's she's exciting you know? but for men to be to be you know that someone will carry you it means that you have to let go some you know some grounds let go some some control let's let go some uh you know things you have built for yourself so let's be today like a chill like children like kids of god yeah. that we can trust our life to him and allow our lovely father Mm -hmm. carry us on his hands yes amen and guys i can tell you brothers uh right now it's a time of sunset sun just get down we i don't know if you hear it uh, through our mics but we're sitting on the rooftop and around us lots of prayers going on uh you know prayers of shaharit you know prayers when uh, special prayers for sunset you know we see in the bible god said to people of israel to sacrifice and pray every morning and every night hallelujah so that's a tradition people pray at night uh, i know if you live in uh uh, uh western part of, of of the world it's probably daytime or morning time if you live in the east it's uh, early early morning right uh, it's, it's a night time uh but it's uh what time is it in, in jerusalem it's eight no seven 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 twenty seven twenty twenty five thirty five forty almost forty yeah and we're going to pray right now for you and i just feel the holy spirit already moving the presence of god is here and you know uh, every time I feel presence of God, I experience presence of God when I'm going live, when I serve people, I really value it because I know it's not for me. For me, it's when I see God in my quiet room, right? Yeah. When I relaxed and I'm with my family, when I'm uh, with my with my kids or with my team when we pray together. But when I go in life and nobody watching us, only my friend Alex is here behind the camera, uh, he's checking everything. but. God is moving here and His presence is already here. He's given me a sign that actually He is preparing your hearts, my heart to serve and your hearts to receive and to be blessed by God Himself and to receive this blessing from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And I can tell you, brothers, uh, this morning uh, I called to Miriam, you know, the one sister Miriam. She is a good family friend. She's a minister, uh, a ladies minister in my congregation in our church. And uh, she called me and shared with me amazing testimony. And I love it. You know, when I pray for people and people get healed, I love it. When others, men of God, pray for people and people have different stories, I love it. But when my team, people I disciple, people I lead to the Lord, people I speak life to them and encourage them, when they pray and miracles happen, I love it even, even more. Hallelujah. You know, recently I got a phone call uh, from Sidroth and I spoke to Sidroth and he asked me, Israel, how are you doing? Uh, what's happening in Israel? And we had a wonderful conversation. And I told him, one of the things I shared with him what God spoke to me about going live and how God speak, spoke to me about anointing he's going to give me, given me and a blessing to go live, not because it's good and it's, it's, uh, it's necessity today, but 
he spoke about anointing and things he's going to do through my life. So, uh, you know, his old man, 88 years old, uh, 78, sorry, 78 years old, and he said to me, uh, Israel, listen, I have a word for you. Think of your friends. Think of people around you. Uh, teach them to pray. Use them, give them platform, give them a ways to go out and pray for people because this way it will be not just Israel, another new uh, healing minister or whatever or whatsoever. And we don't call ourselves healing minister. We just pray for sick and God healing them. We pray for many other stuff. We build a congregation, we build a church. That's our first assignment. But anyway, uh, we see, we start to see growing number of prayers. I love it, the Shaharit prayer. Yeah, you see uh, people praying here on the hill in Jerusalem. But anyway, so today my, fa my heart felt with joy because Miriam sh shared with me a story. She said to me, uh, uh, Pastor Israel, yesterday I went to visit a young lady. She was sick, uh, severely sick. Uh, she had, in Hebrew we say, zavat blood, or uh, she, she used losing blood. Uh, she had a woman's problem. I don't know exactly the names of this uh, sickness, but she had a problem and uh, she was losing blood constantly. She gets surgery, but surgery doesn't help. She continued to lose blood uh, till that moment. And Miriam said, okay, sister, let me pray for you. Now, this lady, she called her sister, but she's, she, this lady, she is on the way to the Lord. She's seeking the Lord. She just knew to faith. She's just doing first baby steps in the Lord and in their walk with the Lord. She never had healings. She never heard about healings yet. So she, Miriam told her, God teaches us to lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Can I pray for you? So lady said, yes, okay, pray for me. So Miriam prayed, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, she prayed for her, and you know what? Nothing happened right away, nothing happened. So they talk about word of God, they talk faith, you know, like you do with your people, right? Like I do with my friends when I pray for people. We speak in faith, we, we teach people how to trust God's, uh, God's promises, how to exercise, exercise our faith and not to give up and expect for God to move and heal us. And she left. This very morning, I was in Galilee, I took a couple of days in Galilee to pray, to pray for our uh, life, to pray for power of God, to pray for anointing of God, for this uh, live stream and other projects we do. Uh, so I had my quiet time and uh, I was sitting on the Galilee and hearing the story about Israeli young lady that was touched by prayer of Miriam, okay, another Israeli lady. And uh, so this lady testified, as I thought of uh, the lady that came to Jesus, she was 12 years, years sick, uh, she, was, she was losing constantly blood, but there was another problem. She was unclean. By the Jewish tradition, by the Old Testament tradition, a lady that has uh, blood streaming from her body, she is unclean. And there is special teaching in the Bible. If the lady is unclean, she has to go out and spend seven days to clean herself, to be ceremoniously killed, uh, healed, to be able to go again to the temple, to be able to uh, come to the house of the Lord. Uh, so she was unclean and she cannot appear, she couldn't appear in the crowd of Israelis. Otherwise, everyone she touched will be unclean. If she touch a priest, he will be unclean. So there was serious religious, traditional, biblical problem. This lady was sick. She lost her, uh, lots of her blood through these years, 12 years of sick. It says, Bible says, I, mean, I know probably most of you will know the story, right? Uh, she spent all the, most of the money she get, it says actually all the money she get on the doctors and nothing helped her. She was uh, continue to be sick. But one day she heard about Jesus, hallelujah. She came to Jesus himself. She pushed, it says she pushed her way through. She touched many people. It was bad behavior <laughs> by the Old Testament, right? Yep. Bad behavior. She was touching people around her. She was touching them. Give me, to, give me, give me reach him. And when she grabbed Jesus, power came out of Yeshua and she was instantly healed. Hallelujah. Even Yeshua testified. Oh, I felt power left me. Who touched me? Disciples laughed for, uh, about Jesus' uh, conversation. Everyone touches you, Jesus, the crowd around you. Everyone touches you. No, 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 he said, someone touches me. It was Lady uh, Zavat, Bla, Zavat uh, Dam, uh, or, or the Lady that losing her blood. Now, this Israeli lady, yesterday she received prayer. This morning, she called back to Miriam, to my sister, to our sister, and she said, I 
get totally healed. I woke up in the morning and first time for a long period of time, I didn't use a, a drop of blood. God helped me. She felt physically changes, but also, also she saw sign she was healed. Hallelujah. You know, preparing, preparing for that, when I was listening to this testimony, I felt in my spirit that God wants to heal people today. He wants to heal ladies. Ladies that have uh, woman organs problems, the lower part of belly and all the all the woman organs. Uh, some even maybe have a, a problem with blood. If you are one of this person, you can write us here. If you don't feel like, you can send a personal prayer request uh, to me personally and I will pray with my team over you. Uh, you can send me any other requests, but especially uh, we're going to pray for ladies. We're going to agree with the brother, with Pastor Sergei from Tel Aviv. We're going to agree together and pray for every lady. First of all, for every lady that God will touch their belly, God will touch their organs, that God will touch it and heal it. And we pray for the power of Jesus. Amen? Right now as we speak. So let's agree together and let's pray. From the rooftop or in Jerusalem, we're going to pray for our friends. B'Shem Yeshua. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus. We pray, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for every sister. First of all, we pray for every sister. We pray for every sister, Lord, that you will touch their uh, organs. You will touch their belly. You will touch their uh, womb, Lord. You will touch their organs. You will touch them, Lord. And I pray for supernatural healing. Holy Spirit, touch their lives and heal them, Lord. Heal their wounds, heal their sickness, heal everything that wrong. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. We're asking for Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Come with your presence, no chachut, uh, presence, no chachut cha, with your presence and touch everyone who needs healing, Lord, in this part of the body, B'Shem Yeshua. And now we pray for everyone. We pray, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for your healing, Jesus, and we ask, Touch and heal our friends. Put your hand on over your chest, over your chest, and we're going to pray. B'Shem Yeshua, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We pray from the, we pray from the place when Jesus performed so many miracles. And apostles walked in God's power and healed so many people, Lord. And now it's a time, it's a new day for Israel. It's a time of restoration of Israel. It's a time to rebuild not only physical Jerusalem and Israel, but also to restore people of God and power of God that flowing again from Jerusalem, from the rooftops of Jerusalem to the lives of brothers and sisters in different corners of the world. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Pastor Israel, when you mm -hmm. uh, share this story of this lady, see 12 years how she pushed through the crowd mm -hmm. I got this word like you know radical faith because again through this uh, pandemic we're going through there will be some changes and I believe what can change our circumstances it's this radical faith when we pushing through the crowds yes. pushing through the opinions of people around us or through opinions of our enemies, through opinions of our circumstances, doctors, whoever it is, or maybe through the opinion of your uh, bank account, you know, we need to learn how to push through and, and get this, he this healing, this breakthrough, this moment of, of uh, miracle in our life. Because I believe something happening when we have this mm -hmm. this moment when it's not just ordinary faith. When we say, "Okay, I see miracle. I don't see miracle. If I feel it, I, I feel. If I don't feel, I don't feel." Uh, my friends, uh, what I believe uh, our faith can move the mountains is when we um, uh, use this example and go radical. We believe that God, our God, He's a God of healing. Our God, He's God of provisions. Our God, He's God of the breakthrough. And we going to have our miracle. Doesn't matter what kind of opinions we have around us. Doesn't matter what is uh, uh, enemies saying around us. So let's, you know, withdraw our faith to God. Yes. And have our breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not look to another, another uh, circumstances around us, but push right. through. 
That's right. So we are live from Jerusalem, and uh, I want to greet every friend who's joining us. Uh, yeah, I see people. Some some people joining us. Uh, Larissa, I see uh, David. Shalom, uh, Jacob, Yaakov, Shalom, brother, Heather, hi Heather, uh, Alexander, I see uh, new friends joined us. And uh, I would love to speak or share with you a few words about Jerusalem. You know, in two days, we have day of prayer uh, for Jerusalem. Friday, it will be actually Jerusalem day. It will be big celebration here in Jerusalem, in city of great king. You know what I like, Pastor Sergei? Jesus himself called Jerusalem city of great king, but he spoke about himself, right? We know the city of Jerusalem as a city of Zion, we know as a city of David, but Jesus himself said, actually God said, it's my city, many times he said, it's my city, right? So it's city of Jehovah, that's the name of our God, right? God the Father, praise the Lord. But also Jesus himself said, don't swear, by, not by temple, not by altar, and he said, nor by Jerusalem because it's a city of great king. I love it, you know, I love it. Jesus himself said, Jerusalem is the city of Jesus, city of great king. And we're going to see together, and hopefully we're going to be live, right? Broadcasting live. And we're going to see last day's events, how Jesus is going to bring back his kingdom and establish his kingdom in this earth. Hallelujah. And he is already at work with all the problems that are occurring in the world. Same time, Jesus is doing his work. And we here in Jerusalem, in Israel, testifying of God's goodness, God's breakthrough, God's miracles. Hallelujah. It's a sign for us and sign for nations. Sign for nations. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, uh, when we speak about the day of Jerusalem, one of the important scriptures in the Bible, it's from Isaiah 66. This, this scripture says about actually every believer, every believer who care about Jerusalem. And I want to tell you, in two days, I would love to invite you right now to pray with us for peace of Jerusalem. Bible said in Psalms, remember how it says? Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim, right? Can you say it with us? Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Can you translate it for our viewers? Uh, ask for the peace. Yeah, or most of the translations say pray for the peace, but yeah. literal translation would be ask, that's right. Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. It says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So join us. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, King David said, I will pray for Jerusalem for the sake of my family, for the sake of my friends, for the sake of the uh, house of the Lord, which has been my ministry. I will continue to pray for Jerusalem. So pray with us for the peace of Jerusalem. But also here is a wonderful promise in Isaiah 66 verse 10. It says, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her. Okay? So God telling you, Rejoice with Jerusalem. When you see breakthrough in Jerusalem, when you hear good news from Jerusalem, rejoice with Jerusalem, rejoice with us, hallelujah, and be glad with your. God has given you spirit of gladness. And I feel right now as we speak, God is touching someone who has depression in their life, in his life, or struggle with heaviness in his heart. So right now, God given anointing of gladness. Oh, I really feel it, you know, anointing of gladness, in Hebrew we say Shemin Sason, right? Shemin Sason, hallelujah. God is giving you oil of joy and uh, telling you be glad with Jerusalem. Now all you who love her, everyone who love Jerusalem, rejoice with Jerusalem, rejoice greatly with her. Wow, greatly, rejoice greatly. Great joy is coming to your life. All you who mourn over here, you know, when we mourning and when we crying, when we worry, I mean, in our prayers, carry Jerusalem in your prayers, Bible said, rejoice. You know why? For you will nurse and be satisfied at your comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in your overflowing abundance. Hallelujah. For this is what says the Lord, I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like a flood streaming and God is keeping here with beautiful promises to Jerusalem hallelujah but you see what's important God said but God when God going to restore Jerusalem and he's already restoring when God going to show his glory over Jerusalem and he's already showing his glory you know what's going to happen you know what's going to happen Bible said you will rejoice 
you will be glad. You will see presence of God. You will experience special visitations of the Lord. Hallelujah. So what God is doing to Jerusalem, it's also connected to your life. What God is doing in Israel, in Jerusalem, it's connected to your life. Hallelujah. So we pray for you, dear brother. Pray for spirit of joy instead of heaviness. Pray for spirit of breakthrough instead of mourning. Pray for you right now from the rooftop here in Jerusalem. Pray for power of Jesus to overcome your difficult circumstances. Hallelujah. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach in the name of Jesus. And when it's broken, when the power of Satan is broken, we're receiving joy of Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh. In Hebrew, Holy Spirit is Ruach HaKodesh, right? We're receiving presence of Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So before we will finish and pray, final prayer for all the friends who are watching us, uh, Brother Sergei, Pastor, tell us what's going on in Tel Aviv in our days, in those days. What happened in Tel Aviv? Can I still tell us, feel us in a little bit about life in Israel? Come on, it's, it's usual, usual um, Tel Aviv, it's a city of freedom, city when people have this freedom, actually, uh, even though we had some restrictions, uh, Tel Aviv, was one of the cities you know don't care about any restrictions because people they need freedom so i would describe in one word tel aviv it's a city of freedom it's a city when people look for freedom and of course most of the people they look for a sinful freedom and we parties yeah parties uh, gay culture drugs and mm. uh, you name it uh, so dear friends so dear friends we're praying for you but Pray for Tel Aviv. I know most of the people, when they pray for Israel, they pray uh, for generally Israel or Jerusalem, you know. Mm -hmm. And we understand that Jerusalem needs your prayer, well, uh, sure. But, you know, one of the great cities and big cities in Israel, it's actually Tel Aviv. And it's totally lost city. Mm -hmm. There is lots of great people, wonderful people, talented people, but also lots of sin. And actually for size of Tel Aviv, in Tel Aviv we have very few churches, right? For the size, for the such a size of uh, you know millions of people living around Tel Aviv, you know Tel Aviv and, and area. Th it, uh, speaking about Tel Aviv, the thing is that Tel Aviv it's a trendy city, and if we talk about younger generation not living just in Tel Aviv, they take this trend. So when we pray for Tel Aviv or we plant in church there, we build you know new kind of freedom for people because they pursue freedom. So we give them freedom in Yeshua. Mm -hmm. The thing is when we do have uh, see when we do have these changes in Tel Aviv, we will be influencing on the old younger generation mm -hmm. because, because I would say that now this sinful culture it's not only in Tel Aviv like in the old Tel Aviv city it's spreading mm -hmm. for whole yeah, Jerusalem all over, area all, all over we say great Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv yeah great, great Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. it's, it's over two million people around three million or something mm -hmm. like yeah, that that's right in, all, in total so it's a it's a majority of Israelis people they live in Tel Aviv area. Mm -hmm. So when we changing this city, we can have an influence on on the younger generation. I believe on the whole yeah. Israel. So we pray for Jerusalem for sure, and we believe in the in the in the peace of in Jerusalem. I pray, pray for Ashdod, of course. For Ashdod, <laughs> we pray and we pray strategically for Tel Aviv because yes. Tel Aviv sets a tone, sets a trend for younger generation, and mm -hmm. I believe. It's very, very strategic to, mm -hmm. you know, to bless Tel Aviv and, and be part of what God is doing in Tel Aviv. Amen. So we're going to pray for Tel Aviv as well. Keep praying for Tel Aviv. Keep praying for Israel. But also, I'm glad to see how God is rising up body of Messiah in Israel. We are on the rooftop in Jerusalem. Behind us, wall of, walls of Jerusalem. I see them a little bit in the dark. Uh, yeah, the scenery is changing. Uh, you know, sunset already came. Uh, but God is raising people of prayer in Israel in our days. God is raising people of prayer in my congregation. You know, 
uh, we're going to see actually even more miracles. You know what God did just a few days? It's a testimony. God spoke to my wife uh, to raise a prayer, to take prayer to next level. So she's building teams of, first of all, ladies. You know, they are faithful prayer warriors. I love to call them warriors. They, they're fighting in the spirit. They're praying, they're interceding, they're worshiping, you know, crying before the Lord. Hallelujah for all the friends. Uh, and one of the reasons, it's yes to pray for Israel, pray for viral for Israel, but also to pray for the nations. Pray for you, my friend and brother and sister. Pray for you. So when you send us your prayer requests, I taking them down, I keeping them, and I taking them to my prayer team. And I have men, I have strong prayer team. Praise the Lord! When they pray, God just moving. Hallelujah! So pray, we pray for what God is doing in Israel, but also we pray for nations. And it's a time for us to serve the nations, to pray for the nations. Hallelujah! And you know, next ten days, I want to share with you a couple of stuff, and we're going to pray. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to pray uh, today. In few days, next uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have Feast of Shavuot, Pentecost. I know in America, in Europe, uh, in other parts of the world, it's different date because world lives by Gregorian calendar, or we call it international calendar, right? Yeah, it's Gregorian calendar. But uh, by the way, you know the ancient, the oldest copy uh, of the of the uh, oldest Gregorian calendar in the world was discovered two years ago in my city, in Ashdod. <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, in Byzantine time, we had a big, uh, uh, big uh, Georgian community, uh, Gregorian, you know, they came from Georgia, the calendar came from Georgian you know, guys, uh, not Jews, but Georgians, yeah, people from Kogos. Anyway, so uh, in Israel, we live by biblical calendar. Actually, it's also moon calendar. You know, it's a biblical calendar. And we have different dates. In our days, compared to the Gregorian calendar, they change every year. Some of you know that, some, some, of them, some of you not. So next week, we're going to have a day of Pentecost, Shavuot. Jesus, Yeshua, sent his spirit over Israel on the Hebrew calendar. Not the Gregorian calendar, because when disciples wrote down these stories, they were Israelis, they were Jews, they wrote, wrote it down by Hebrew calendar. So actually, biblically, it will be next week. Now, we will join you when you're going to celebrate by your calendar. Uh, you know, God knows, God understands. Uh, so wonderful, we will join you and we will celebrate it with you. But it's good to know biblical calendar. It's good to know when it is in the Bible and uh, celebrate together with people of God. Hallelujah. So uh, day by day, I record in short messages, short videos, and I'm giving you different insights and different uh, messages about Feast of Shavuot. What does it mean? And there is lots of meanings. There is lots of messages in it. Uh, but first of all, I emphasize Old Testament because we all knew the new, uh, uh, new Testament, right? We all knew New Testament. We all read New Testament. We know the book, uh, book of Acts, chapter two, one and two, and words of Jesus. And we're going to touch it as well. But first of all, I'm going to fill you with different insights of Old Testament, uh, different uh, hidden treasures of Old Testament, and you will see even deeper connection between old and new and what God have done. Because I can tell you, uh, Sergey, that's my experience. When I speak with some friends, they feel like, testify, they feel like, uh, you know, Jesus just came to Jerusalem, you know. He said to them, wait, and a and, and certain day when he wanted, he just pulled down the Holy Spirit. And, and, and he called this day, day of Pentecost, you know, because it was 50 days after the death of Jesus, right? No. <laughs> No, it was well planned from the Old Testament. When Jesus actually got himself, he said, when Jesus is going to die, when he's going to resurrect, when he's going to appear to his disciples, and when he's going to pull his Holy Spirit, more than a thousand years before it happened. Hallelujah. A New Testament event, it was fulfillment of promises of God given by God himself in, on Mount of Sinai in the desert. Hallelujah. So when we study by this connection, it's enriching our faith and giving them beautiful, uh, giving us back beautiful biblical culture and help us to understand deeper what God is doing. So I can tell you, you have all the reasons believe in miracles of God in those days. From uh, this day, 
uh, because we have this count, we started count down. Uh, now it's eight days before, I think eight days or yeah, eight days before Feast of Shavuot. So we started to count down. So prepare for miracles, prepare for breakthrough, hallelujah, in every level of your life. Whatever your need, prepare for it. And we going to pray for you with Pastor Sergi, with our friends from uh, uh, our Israeli team, we're going to pray for you. So send us your prayer request. We're going to be praying. Hallelujah. Now, our time, time is running out. And uh, sorry we missed the first 20 minutes, but uh, praise God, we've been able to go live anyway. And now we're going to pray for every viewer, every friend. We're going to release God's prayer. And then by the end, I'm going to pray in Hebrew for you and I'm going to release our own blessing or benediction and uh, I will release prayer that God himself gave to us from Jerusalem. Uh, Sergey, please start this prayer and whatever you feel in your heart, pray for our friends yeah. and then I will close up with uh, prayer in Hebrew. Thank you, Lord. We Hallelujah. Adore you. We worship you in this place. Thank you for your Thank you, Jesus. Thank mm -hmm. you for your timing. Lord, we're so thankful that this uh, whole pandemic is going down Hallelujah. all over the world, Lord, that this, this was not like a year or something, that not so many people have died. We're so thankful for that, Lord. We're thankful for Jerusalem. We're praying for Hallelujah. you right now, and we ask for the peace of this city. Lord, we ask your uh, supernatural protection. Yes, and Lord. more than that, we ask for the spiritual revival for this city. We declare Hallelujah, that Yeshua. people will have open heart to you, Yeshua. Mm -hmm. We ask you, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, in this time yes. of Shavuot, of the Pentecost celebration, yes, Lord. we ask that you, Holy Spirit, will reveal, uh, reveal for hundreds of people the yes. face of Yeshua, that they would understand Hallelujah. that you are the true Messiah, and not yes, only Lord. Messiah, but the Lord of their lives in the name of Jesus. And we Hallelujah. pray for Tel Aviv city as well. I'm raising up this city. I'm working in, Lord, and I ask for the real freedom, that people will find sure. freedom in you. And I ask yes, for Lord. the for the spirits uh, of uh, Mammon, of the spirits of homosexual spirits, I ask that you, Lord, will cast them out. Uh, from our city in the name of Yeshua and as well I'm blessing everyone who is watching right now I ask for the special anointing for them in this time Hallelujah. that you Holy Spirit will show them yes, Lord. Uh, their ways that you will show them their next steps I ask for the healing Hallelujah. for the provisions Lord for yes, Lord. Uh, double blessing in their life Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus from the city of Jerusalem we pray Hallelujah. Amen. Amen so uh, uh, I release uh, ironic prayer or ironic benediction in Hebrew. So I pray that God will bless you and keep you. And it's amazing prayer because this prayer contains every level of your life, every side of your life. This prayer contains peace of God. You know, when we say shalom, shalom have a, a shalom. Another word for shalom is shalem, the to be whole. You know, uh, the miracles of God, protection of God, just blessing and joy of the Lord in your life, salvation of your life. Hallelujah. So uh, this prayer have it all. So I pray. Ivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai panav elecha ve'ikunecha, Ya'er Adonai panav elecha ve'yasem lecha shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Hallelujah. So dear friends, be blessed. I see some uh, more friends joined us. Uh, Keith joined us. Shalom. Uh, good to see you. Uh, Ingimar, uh, shalom. Ambrina and Tina, uh, shalom dear friends. Shalom, shalom. Yes, and uh, please, uh, our Israeli friends, uh, say amen and say shalom in Hebrew. Write uh, blessings from Jerusalem. Write it in Hebrew, please. I write when uh, our international friends can see it in Hebrew. Okay, please write it down. Uh, write it down right here. Tell them Shalom. Uh, and uh, I'm also greeting them, <laughs> sending likes and hearts. So we had a wonderful time here on the rooftop in Jerusalem. We started with the sunset. Now uh, it's uh, dark around us. Yeah, we see, cool. yeah, it's, it's cooled down a little bit. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, behind us is uh, Jaffa Gate, hallelujah. Uh, by the way, 
Friends, who of you have been to Jerusalem? Who ever visited Jerusalem? Please send me uh, some sign, right? Send me this sign, them, or, or send me Amen, or I have been there. And uh, who if not, who have not been in Israel, we will pray for you that after this pandemic, after all this mess and troubles in the world, you will be able to come and worship in, with us in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Ashdod, in my church, to worship in Hebrew, to worship in English, in Tel Aviv. Now, I, you know, I will introduce you to my friend uh, Sergei. They have wonderful church in Tel Aviv, worth a visit, really good church, full of young people, and God is moving among the young people in Tel Aviv, hallelujah. So uh, we will worship together, we will celebrate together, we will join hands, and we will serve Him together. It will over. It will change, the pandemic will go, and we will unite together in different countries, but also here in Jerusalem, here in Israel. Shalom, dear brothers. Shalom.